All right, ladies and gentlemen and fellow friends, good afternoon and welcome to our Focus for Advanced Primary Eye Care Ritual. So this is right here happening at the Ground 4 Santa Cross of AO Motor Brawl City. And today we are going to have a very special session, which is about our public eye health talk, which we have invited professionals to come over right here to share with us this interesting topic, common eye problems in a child. But before we dive into this topic, let me firstly introduce to you a bit about our focus point, advanced primary eye care. So we do have our free eye screening where you can get your eyes checked for free and also we will be here until the upcoming 3rd of March 2024. Alright, so do share this information to your families and friends and invite them to join us right here in our AU Motor Pro City Ground Floor Center course for our Focus Point Ritual. So today, this topic is about our common eye problems in a child and we're invited professionals to join us to share this information about this topic. So I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. We have Miss Molly. Hi, good afternoon everyone. <laughs> yes, hi Miss Molly. Good day to you as well. Could, do you, you mind to introduce, you, uh, introduce yourself a little bit to our families, our friends right here? Okay, my name is Molly, as Amber introduced, and I graduate from Sydney University 2023, and I'm currently working uh, under Focus Point, who is City Square. So today I would like to give more information about common eye problems in a child, and the treatment that you guys can carry on on yourself. All right, so this is especially for parents as well. If you do have kids and would like to get to know more information about what are the preven prevention measures and also what kind of eye disease that you need to take care of, be aware of in your children. All right, this is a talk for you. All right, so Miss Molly, let's move on with the next slide as we say that what are the common eye problems in a child? Okay, before I start to the common uh, problems, I would like to tell a uh, poem which is an announce of prevention. It's word of pound of care, which means the prevention is always better. Okay, so let's go for the topic where I like to present a certain common eye problems among the children where I start with amblyopia, conjunctivitis, strabismus, astigmatism, hyperopia, which is a refractive errors, and also catch it. So let's move further about. This is a, a basically an article by Edward and a fellow friends where he did a research about the common ocular problems among children. And they found that uh, refractory error, which is more prone in children, and following with congenital abnormalities like cataract, strabismus, and also allergic conjunctivitis. So, uh, it's about amblyopia, which is lazy eyes. Uh, okay, so what, what if you want to ask, what is amblyopia? Basically, when the problem is only occur in one eye, one eye where the refractive will be even higher. Slowly, the eye will reject inform the brain will reject information from the particular eye, which is we call as weaker eye. And up to three out of hundred children have it. But the good news about this is, as you're taking early treatment, it actually works well, and also the prognosis will be even better as it's taking treatment earlier. Oh, so this is our first disease, and blind PR, so which is lamentable as lazy eye. So, what are the some of the symptoms of this lazy eye? Uh, the symptoms usually uh, parents are hard to notice, but usually the children will screen the eyes and shutting one eye because. They will tend to get information from one eye, another eye is always give a, a not an accurate information. So the brain will tend to stop information. So they, pre uh, they prefer to shut one eye and looking at the object. And also they like to tilt their head in order to see the object because that gives them even more clear uh, image. So, uh, <clears throat> so basically, how to know this? If their, if their parents notice this and they bring them for a uh, 
an examination as soon as possible. For example, among between age of three to five, where, where we call as critical age. If they found this around three to five and the treatment started earlier, actually it will be more better prognosis in future. I see. So how do I know if I'm a parent? How do I know my child is at risk for this lazy eye? Uh, basically, if you have a child who born premature, like born earlier than the expected, or uh, they were smaller in size, average birth size, and also if there is any family history of amblyopia or childhood cataract or any eye condition, and also if they have development, uh, in development abilities, like difficulties in that, then there is high chances for them to, there is a high risk for amblyopia. I see. So what actually causes, what are the reasons causing this amblyopia? Uh, you mean the causes of, okay, basically, if there is a, a uncorrected refractive errors, for example, they born with some certain refractive error, like myopia or hyperopia or astigmatism, and it's not corrected, it can cause that, or strabismus, like the eye squinting out or squinting in, it's not aligned, or cataract, like, Whenever, to be in a simple form, whenever the information is not received by the brain, it can cause amblyopia. Like, it stops the information from the particular eyes because no longer get an accurate results. That's where uh, amblyopia occur. So right now, moving on to how to treat these amblyopia. Basically, the first step usually will be correct the uh, refractive error, which is, uh, for example, if the child have any refractive error under corrected, correct that first. And then, patch the, weak, uh, the stronger eye and push the weaker eye to work, to get the information from the brain. Basically, because it's already stopped getting the information right, so push the eyes to get the information. So where, where you push the eyes to work, Basically, the amblyopia will detach it and then it will back to the normal. The vision will be received from the both eyes. So, uh, correction is the first thing. Secondly, patching eye, which is patch the eye and let the weaker eye, causing the weaker eye to work. That I see. Correction and then we force the other eye to work. So, I'm just curious about this wearing an eye patch. So, normally, how long will be uh, this uh, wearing an eye patch? For example, like, I need to wear it for like weeks or up to uh, even months to correct this and buy PR. Okay, so basically how it happened is, one I found out the degree is at one eye is very high, another eye is very low, and also the vision is not poor. What I will do is correct the patient first and then on top of the correction, we will give you the eye patch. So basically for one week, uh, I will let them to let parents to wear that at least minimum two hours and let them do their works, near work usually. So after that, uh, bring them to the clinic like after one week and I will notice again of their work, how they are actually handling with their uh, readings books or iPad or anything. After one week and on the session, I will notice that, is that okay how they are using the behavior of using the, I mean, doing the near works. So usually, the next follow-up will be one month. After one month, we'll check on their 3D vision, basically depth perception. Also, they will check, we will check the uh, visual equity, means the vision acquired, the proper vision. We will see if there is an improvement. We try to continue back and also, uh, which we will do the follow-up followingly like every one month. Mm. Ah, I see. Thanks for the very detailed uh, explanation about this uh, wearing an eye patch. Alright, so that's about our uh, employee PR, which is the lazy eye. And we shall move on to our second, second common eye problem, which is the uh, conjunctivitis. Yeah, it's basically a childhood conjunctivitis among children is very common because they like to play around uh, and they like to, yeah, like that. And also they like to touch things and go bring their fingers of dirt to their mouth usually. If you notice a lot, they always like to touch everything and then put into their mouth or eyes like that. When this thing happens, usually this happens when bacteria a virus or allergy I mean, uh, causes this. Basically, these are the three things are main thing to happen conjunctivitis, which means the swollen of the 
white part of the eye which is can have the red eyes or you can not even notice some dis, uh, discharges like a yellowish or anything that when they are like today they're having the congenitis on the morning when they wake up you can notice all this it's because purely of the bacterial viral and allergic reaction uh, other than what you mentioned just now like the discharge and also what are the more obvious symptoms that we can observe for this conjunctivitis uh, if even adults, we also will have this conjunctivitis, but children's symptoms will be a bit different. So basically, they don't know to tell. So what they will do is keep on rubbing their eyes. And also, you can see it like obvious eyelid swelling. And also, you can see they are tend to cry a lot. And then mild pain, they will complain like, I feel pain, I feel discomfort, but they really don't know to tell. But you can notice all this. Even as I mentioned earlier, you can see some green tick uh, discharge. And also you can see they are keep on sneezing, running nose, and a clear thin fluid leaking from their eyes. And also they can complain of burning in eyes. So all this will be common symptoms that usually will show to us. Then when you notice all this, try to bring them to any ophthalmologist or nearby eye clinic as soon as possible. Yeah, I see. Because I think it's very common for children not do not know how to tell their parents they are having this conference. So having knowing all these symptoms, maybe parents, you may do take notes and also get to know, hey, oh, my child may be having some of these symptoms and should I or be more aware and quickly bring them to have a checkup. Mm, right. Yes. Alright, so these are the symptoms of the conjunctivitis. So how is it being treated in a child? As I mentioned earlier, the moment you started to see the symptoms and signs, try to bring them to any clinic or a nearby eye specialist, ophthalmologist, or even optometrist can rule out this. Oh, what is the causes? But we really, to find out the causes behind it, you have to do some lab, uh, lab tests to confirm what is that. So usually the treatment will be uh, like they will give you uh, antibacterial to that and also make sure the it is not uh, congenous to the other eye because they like to rub their eyes when they have discomfort and they will touch the other eye it can always you know uh, spray to the other eye and cause infection and even it can cause infection to our us also because we are touching them right so once you have found out this the best thing is bring them to i mean as soon as possible to any nearby clinics to prevent this to be worse and also if you are take, delaying the situation in certain case it can tend up to cause blindness. Mm. Yeah, so the, as the prevention will be, as I mentioned uh, again, the prevention is better than, you know, you are curing them. So try to bring them and try to always see uh, what are the things they are keep on doing. If any simple complaint they are complaining, just bring them and find it out and rule it out. What is the issue behind it? Ah, I see. I think this is quite severe because I saw the infection can also spread to other people. Yeah. Wow. If even more severe can cause blindness. So this is talking about allergies and also virus. So is it meaning that the prevention measures for preventing this conjunctivitis is to taking good care of our hygiene? Correct. Not only this, what are the uh, virus, bacteria or anything, the hygiene is the main important thing before it's, you know, reached to us. So by cleaning our hands, make sure that children are also cleaning their eye, fingers, I mean the hands, washing with the proper, uh, any um, that you're usually using. Uh, uh, make sure that children is, you cannot stop them from playing, but once they come back from playing, playground, anything, make sure they wash their hands and feet. That's hygiene is very important. Mm, I see. Taking good hygiene is very important to prevent this uh, disease, conjunctivitis. So the parents also do take care, take good care of your children and also asking them to wash their hands uh, frequently and properly. Right. Ah, okay. So moving on, let's talk about the next uh, common eye problem which we will talk about strabismus. Yeah, strabismus is actually, to be in simple terms, when the eyeball is not aligned. When you notice the eyeball is no longer aligned, it's like move outward or inward squinting that is called strabismus. So there is a few types of strabismus when uh, we call it, uh, there is a different type like when it's move out, it's uh, 
exotropia, move in, endotropia, move up, move down. To be more precise, you, have, you can study a lot on that. Or oh, when you notice your children's eye is no longer straight and it's, you know, move in, out, or up, down, any like that, or oh, it's not necessary to be always, you know, it's sometimes can be intermittent, whereby after prolonged meal work, when they get tired, you can notice that the eye is moving out, which means also chalismus. In that case, the best part, the best thing you can do is bring them to any optometrist or any ophthalmologist to rule out this condition. Is it because of what are the rule? I mean, what are the uh, actual thing behind it? Is it just because of the refractive, or just because of uh, the muscle problem, or even there is any cataract or anything that cause the alignment of the eyeball is no longer straight. So early diagnosis is very important in this. And also the amblyopia also, also can cause trabismus. Oh, it's like linked to each other. Yeah. I see. So we can also have, as you mentioned, that we had to notice about these signs and any other symptoms that we need to be aware of. Uh, basically, uh, the symptoms will be, they, they will notice some, um, the main thing is crossed eye, as I mentioned, it's no longer straight. That's the main thing. Secondly, they will have the uh, habit of tilting their head. They no longer straight, see straight. They will tilting their head to see the because usually they will have diplopia in this case. Diplopia means double vision. So when they have this double vision, they try to make things clear or straight. So they always tilt their head or you know rub their eyes until the eye turned red because their their information is no longer. Uh, single image so which is these are the common symptoms mm, that they usually or if they are siblings who already have strabismus there is chances to them or the other siblings to have this so once they have bring them to confirm that whether they do have or not uh, like ah, that. I see for this one when a sibling has a strabismus it is somehow related to like family history yeah ah, I see so moving on Talking about what are the risk factors for strabismus? As I mentioned, if the family history of strabismus, there is chances. And also prematurity or low birth weight or retinopathy or premature of prematurity or uh, cataract or uh, any muscular ab abnormalities where usually our eye align uh, with the helpful of the muscles. When there is not enough help from the muscles, it tends to divert out. So where if the muscles have any abnormalities, it there is a cause of a risk of strabismus. Also, neurological abnormalities like any brain tumors can cause strabismus as well, brain tumor, yeah? and also amblyopia. I see. So how to treat this amblyopia if uh, let's say early diagnosis there should be mild situation and also maybe severe situation, maybe what are the difference between these two treatments? Uh, okay, okay, so basically if there is a strabismus, there is two stages of mild strabismus and also severe strabismus where the deviation which we can rule out whether it's mild or it's a severe one or it depends on how strong they can, you know, in certain case, the children can actually control their diver. That's the interesting part there. They really can control and make the eyes align. So in that particular thing, it's considered mild. In that in that condition, usually it will be like, we can treat them with glasses, uh, like uh, giving a proper refractive and a corrector problem with the glasses or patching therapy, like how amblyopia, for the amblyopia we do. So from there, it's like they can align, they can bring back to the position of the actual eye bulb. But when it's come for severe strabismus, we no longer can have them with glasses or patching because it's more like the muscle issue. So in that thing, we really have to bring them for a surgery. Surgery is the only option for that. But if you do it as soon as possible, in the critical age that I mentioned, it will be even better uh, prognosis in future. You know, their vision will be, the 3D vision won't be affected. If you're going to delay the process, the 3D image is going to be effect, whereby they no longer appreciate the depth perception Really, mm. mm. I see. Thanks for the detailed explanation. So this is about our tribe business. They are mild and also severe situation. 
And moving on, let's talk about our next common eye program, which is the myopia. Yeah, now everyone has started to know about myopia already, but still, I would like to inform, I mean, like to give more clarification on myopia, where myopia is nearsightedness. Their vision will be good when they do near work, but when looking for far, they can have blur vision, no longer can see clear, they will like, uh, they will have some issues at distance compared to near work. So that is myopia. And also, uh, it's a very com most common refractive error sees in children, basically. And also, it's not present in at birth, usually. And also, it will develop when the children begin to grow up. Yes, let's take a look at what are the symptoms for parents who may be to be aware on if their child may have myopia problems. Okay, so uh, usually the, uh, the, the parents notice, started to notice when they are around 9 to 10, their schooling time, usually they will have complaint that they cannot see the blackboard or whiteboard, they will start to see their uh, friends, fellow friends, books and they will delay and they always complain and the teachers also started to complain like whereby their performance is very poor it's not because they don't like to study it's just they cannot see what is written in the whiteboard or blackboard so in this situation uh, and uh, myopia is taking place but with the proper checkup then only you know whether it's myopia or any other thing that actually leading to it or uh, some other signs and symptoms such as headache, nausea after reading, uh, holding book close to their face and writing with their head close to the table or even sitting or going nearer to the television, uh, screening when they are looking at any object basically. So whenever they are doing all this stuff, like don't just stop them, oh don't do this, this is not good, don't do that, usually our parents will do that. Don't com I mean, don't repeat the same mistake that what our parents did. This is no longer a normal issue really. It's a serious matter that can cause to blindness. So whenever they go nearer or holding iPad closer to their faces, stop them and bring them and rule out what is the issue behind it actually. Yeah, this is a very important message for all the parents out there. So if your child is facing this kind of problem, uh, standing very close to the TV, don't scold them. Maybe they are having myopia problems developing. Uh, quickly get them to have a check on. Yeah. Alright, so this is for myopia. I think this is quite easy to recognize, yeah. uh, to diagnose. Correct, correct. So what are the treatments available for myopia? Mainly now everyone knows, but even I'm telling you that the myopia is not a, as I mentioned, it's not a easy, it's a serious thing. So uh, eyeglasses or contact lenses, even many brands uh, like a Hoya or Acelo Zeiss, many brands are taking very serious about this condition and they're coming out special lenses for myopia especially for children to control the myopia so you can get more information about that and you try to find out what are the technology they are using to control the eyes i mean to control the myopia and progression so from there it can help to correct the myopia yeah just one thing that i'm curious about with proper glasses the myopia problem, the degree, I mean the power of the, the thing will not increase, right? Uh, not only the correction of the glasses, also some lifestyle modification will place a main role in this. It's not only giving the degree, it's also you make sure that children is not using a lot of new words, even colouring or reading or iPads or anything, not only digital, yeah, any new work prolonged usage of two hours along, there is a studies that prove that there is chances to myopia increase the eyeball tend to elongate. Okay, so in that case, degree is not only enough. You have to make sure there is an intermittent break, like every 20 minutes at least, take a break, uh, look at far and relax and continue back to their work. Okay, or um, go. I mean, let them to let them to play outside and make sure they have enough, uh, you know, rest for the eye. Mm, I see. I think it's also about lifestyle yeah. habits. Also right. affects a lot. I see. So moving on, let's talk about our next common eye program, which is about hypropia. What are the, some of the background and also related to hypropia? Hypropia is something like myopia, but the difference is in hypropia, 
the vision will be blur at near, not far. My fear was far, right? This yes. is at near. So basically, it appear uh, in childhood, no, not like my fear. It's like appear in childhood already, and also in certain case, it will go off itself as they are growing up. The hyperopia will grow off itself, but when it's not completely corrected, let's say. Uh, in first three years of their life, the hyperopic is not corrected. It's like completely corrected. They will tend to have uh, issues such as they will get tired easily. They cannot do prolonged near work for a longer period. They feel really, really tired because they have to put extra effort to see near work clear. So where it co we call it as accommodation, focus at near, they will have difficulties in that. That's what we have said as hyperopia. I see. So, I would like to know about the symptoms as well for hyperopia. Is it like kind of also similar to the myopia? Uh, kind, but in hyperopia, patient, children usually will complain more toward headache. And they will get tired easily, as I mentioned, because they have to put additional effort to see apnea clear. So, uh, headache is the uh, main cause of this. And also, they, will like, they don't like to study or reading anything for prolonged usage because when they do more than one hour already, they're like, I cannot, I don't want. They started to cry because it's not because they don't want, it's just they cannot, cannot continue their work because it's caused headache and also eye pain in certain cases. And they feel like stinging, like, you know, poking sensation. All this they will start to have. Mm. I see. So these are all the symptoms that we really need to uh, be aware of in our children. So how do we correct hyperopia? Basically, to correct hyperopia is uh, glasses, optical correction glasses, contact lenses also will help uh, in this case. Uh, hyperopia is basically when you correct with the proper glasses, it's actually uh, no need to worry as myopia. We worry about myopia. Correction is simple correct, uh, treatment for hyperopia. I see. So, moving on, we shall move on to another eye, common eye problems. So, we have different eye problems and from previous one, we have understand a few more. And here's another, another eye problem that's common in uh, children. So, let's talk about this astigmatism. Astigmatism. Uh, sorry, astigmatism is not only common among children, even adults also do have. But uh, what we want to, to highlight here is, basically astigmatism, just now myopia was blur at distance, hyperopia below, uh, blur at near. Astigmatism cause blur at both near and distance. Both going to be blur for you. Basically, you're going to see dumber image. There, you will find another shadow, like you know shadow, no longer defined image. There's uh, worst part of astigmatism. It's be mainly because of the cornea is no longer in normal shape. Usually, when the light entering into your eye, if it's a straight, li straight line, you're going to receive a single image, like a clear defined image. But when the light's going to be scattered, you know, a lot of light's going to enter into your eyes, you first, you'll feel very glaring. And also, uh, the image going to be not defined. And you're going to be sensitive. Uh, this is the main cause of astigmatism. I the see. cornea is not receiving single light. Mm. Mm. So, any other uh, symptoms for this uh, disease, this astigmatism? Okay, basically, if as a child has astigmatism, uh, as I mentioned, the both distance far and near object are going to be distorted. And also, uh, they started to squeeze, eye strain, and also headache, but not mm -hmm. as severe as hyperopia do but still they do have all this and also uh, you know uh, they will start to, to like when they're looking at the sunlight they will tend to close their eyes like that one eye they will close their one eyes because very sensitive they cannot accept to the lights mm, I see for this one they tend to have headaches well but not as severe as compared to hyperopia correct I see so how do we treat this Okay, basically, uh, glasses, as same uh, spectacles will correct this condition, but uh, I wouldn't recommend for go for contact lenses because contact lenses don't really play a, main, a good results in this condition. So by correcting uh, astigmatism with the glasses, good enough for children. And also, uh, I noticed that rubbing their eyes severely can cause astigmatism increase a lot. 
So whenever, not only children, even us, when we rub your eyes, when you feel itchy, just go and wash your face or apply some eye drops rather than rubbing your eyes. Yeah, because it's like you are damaging the cornea. The cornea causes astigmatism. Oh, I see. I think it's, it's quite a common thing for us for, yeah. to rub our eyes when we feel itchy. But the most, the most correct way is to wash our face and not to rub our eyes using our hands. I would apply any eye drops and keep on blink. Any dust there, it will go off its head. Ah, I see. This is a very useful tip for everyone. So moving on, talking about this, our next eye problem, we have this cataract. Consider this is the last comment that I would like to uh, explain more. Usually, uh, among us, we think that cataract is something very, very common among adults only. Not actually. Even children will have this. So, don't take it for an easy piece. Just if when you notice your eyes, taking picture time, the eyes is no longer red. Like, when the reflection is not red, looks whitish, you just can bring them to an ophthalmologist to rule out whether it's really a cataract or something else. Or, and also, uh, if let's say the genetic also play a role in this cataract thing with children, yeah? So, when, let's say when the, when the child's mother is pregnant and uh, make sure, you know, they have the follow-up, right? Make sure the, children's is, uh, the, the child is in good and also make sure if there, if there is any rubella or chicken pox when the mother has on the processing of pregnancy, better make sure the child is healthy because rubella and chickenpox can not only catch it, can cause a lot of uh, issues when the child, once the child born. So make sure no other, uh, any effects that while the, the mother has while pregnancy time, make sure there is a full pediatric checkup for the child. Ah, I see. Just curious, what are, what are the actually treatment for this cataract? Surgery. Oh, Surgery is the uh, If it's in child, uh, no longer uh, spectacles will help. The only thing is surgery as soon as possible. When you remove the surgery, because as I mentioned, again, the same thing, critical age 3 to 5. Anything happen among 3 to 5, the, the vision is not corrected. Uh, Amblyopia, strabismus, cataract, anything. And you are not going to treat that. You know, it could actually... Um, causing difficulties in their futures where no longer even though the surgery done the 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 get back of the the results won't be as good as you are done in the critical stage so when you done the surgery as soon as possible uh, first the vision going to be get back and also the uh, the development of the eyeball won't affect it Mm, I see. Thanks for the detailed explanation. So we have talked about a few eye problems uh, in, that's common in children. And Miss Molly, would like to, can you just do a summarize or what are the maybe some of the tips for uh, parents or even for children to take care of their eyes health? Okay, so basically, uh, if they are complaining anything, or oh, just always make sure you are noticing on their behavior. A sudden behavior or prolonging behavior which is caused suspicious just go and check on that don't take it for granted oh children's going to be complained children's wanted to do that that's why they're complaining don't take it for granted always make sure uh, check them especially at least one or uh, at least one time check up on the critical age three to five years that time at least have a one eye examination to make sure there is no any issues so from uh, from doing that, if there is no anything, it's a good news. If there is something, try to take it serious and try to rule out that and give a proper treatment for them so that their future won't be affected. They, they are our future generation. So make sure they uh, get all this important stuff and any, no, nothing is actually blocking their future or education. I see, because Miss Molly keep mentioning that the critical age is between 3 to 5. So early detection, early diagnosis is very important. But maybe how long uh, shall parents take children for like frequent or the eye examination? Like 3 months, 6 months? Usually, uh, pediatrics will be make sure when they are born, they will do the eye examination usually. But uh, I would encourage, even they done when they are baby, like a... Uh, uh, few months of their early age, still try to bring at least once of the, before age of five. 
bring them once and then annually one time is really very recommended one because we don't know what will happen okay so it's it's better to have annually at least once to make sure there is no any issues and if there is any genetic issues try to uh, make sure their children all of them uh, their siblings everyone is perfectly fine i see so i think we are coming to the end of this sharing so before we end this session do you have any extra tips to share with our public or how to take care of our good health any extra tips to share um basically uh ju just remember that prevention is better than cure so always make sure uh even though you are not a full time uh, you are a full time uh, professional or workers anything you have no time to uh take care of your children it's okay make sure that there is someone who can uh notice all this stuff and always take a immediate action don't take it for granted Yes, thank you. Thank you, Miss Molly, for the detailed explanation about our common eye problems in children. So parents, if you do notice some of these symptoms in your child, do not hesitate. Don't take it for granted. Just bring them to have a checkup for their eye examination. And if there's something, make sure that you do get early uh, treatment. All right, so before we end this session, we'd like to once again shout out to all our friends right here. Do join us for our Focus Point Rich Show, which is happening right now at our Ground Floor Centre Cross of Ayo Mall, Broad City. And we will be here until the upcoming 3rd of March 2024. And we do provide you with the free eye screening where you can have your eyes check up and also to get professional advice from our optometrist. And also we do have some branded eyewear and also exclusive promotions to you probably brought to you by focus point so make sure that you share this information to your families and friends and make sure that you do drop by here and visit us at our focus point Rich show and we still have some other public health talks to share with you some other important information so do stay tuned with us stay with us in our focus point Rich show and we shall see you in our Rich show